Hello. So we are finally completing our first design of a Unity Gain Butterworth filter. And in this case, it's going to be a Unity Gain Low Pass Butterworth filter with the following specs a cut of frequency of 800 Hz and relative attenuation of more than uh, 23 dB for a frequency greater than or equal to 2 kHz. So basically, 2 kHz is the beginning of our stop band, and uh, 23 dB is the minimum. Uh, relative attenuation in the stop band. Uh, I have uh, displayed here the two pole and three pole sections as well as the table for the low pass Butterworth filters. And so uh, we can proceed with the design. I've displayed those there so we have them handy. And uh, the first step we have mentioned was to determine the, the order of the filter that we will need. So one is determine minimum order of filter needed to meet the specs. So basically that's the value of n. And we can uh, do that by using the equation for the low pass Butterworth filter magnitude response. In dBs uh, we have seen that it was 20 times the log base 10 of 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus f over fc to the uh, power of 2n. We can enter our values here. So we have uh, minus 23 dB of attenuation at a value of frequency of 2 kilohertz. So if we enter that for the frequency, it will be 20 times the log base 10 of 1 divided by 1 plus 2000 divided by 800 to the power of 2n, which if we solve for n gives us n equal to 2.8. So basically what that means is that we need an order of at least 3, which is the next available integer. So uh, for a third order filter, we are basically going to use the three pole section. And so this one right here. And these are the values of the capacitors that we need. So if I were to sketch my prototype uh, down here, it will basically be um, that circuit with those capacitor values. And I probably am going to need a little bit more room for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, delete this and just keep in mind my n equals 3. So basically, I have done the calculations and I have come up with n equals 3. Step number 2, I'm going to um, sketch uh, my prototype circuit. And again, since n is equal to 3, I'm going to be using a single 3-pole section, which I can now draw as follows. Here is my compensation resistor, which is 3, has a star because it does not play a role in setting the frequency response. Let's see 3 up there. This is V in, now this is V out, C1, C2, C3, and these are my resistors which are all of value 1. And from looking at my table, I have that C1 is equal to 3.546, C2 is equal to 1.392, and C3 is equal to point. 2024. So this is going to be my normalized circuit. Now I can uh, move on to step number three that is going to be performing 
um, frequency and impedance scaling. So perform frequency and impedance. And scaling and so basically we have uh, my frequency scaling factor is going to be equal to omega prime divided by omega or 2 pi times f prime divided by omega which is 2 pi times my new cut of frequency I want it to be 800 and omega for this circuit since this is a normalized circuit is just equal to 1 when I perform that calculation, I come up with 5,026.548. Probably we're going to skip the 48 and just leave it. 5,026.5. Um, now I need to figure out my impedance scaling. Um, but for that, I'm going to need to select at least a capacitor value. And so uh, C1 is going to be my largest capacitor. I can see C1 is uh, obviously about three times the value of C2. Um, and uh, C2 is also several times larger than C3. And so I'm going to select my C1 prime to be equal to uh, 47 nanofarads. And from here I'm going to derive my impedance scaling factor. Uh, since I know that C prime... is equal to 1 over kf kr times c i can conclude that kr is equal to c divided by kf times c prime and therefore i can calculate my kr as being equal to 3.546 divided by 5026.5 times my new value of C1, which is 47 nano. And that gives me 15,000. And from that I can calculate my C2 prime. It's going to be basically equal to um, C divided by KFKR and C2 is 1.329, 392, excuse me divided by 5026.5 times 15k which comes out to be 18 nanofarads and my C3 prime is equal to 0.2024 divided by 5026.5 times 15k or 2.7 nanofarads uh, and then finally my value of resistor r prime is just going to be uh, kr times r r is 1 and kr is 15,000 so this is just going to be 15 kilo ohms uh, so that's it my final design then if i were to replace the values already directly on the circuit is that all of these resistors will be 15 kilo ohms except for this that is marked as a 3 asterisk, which will be 3 times that, or 45 kilo ohms. And again, that doesn't affect the frequency response of the circuit. This is there um, as a compensation resistor for DC offsets. C1 is going to be equal to, uh, we decided, 47 nanofarads. C2 was 18 nanofarads. And C3 was 2.7 nanofarads. And so... The circuit with the components uh, labeled in blue will be the final circuit with the frequency response as specified in the spec. A kind of frequency of 800 Hz and relative attenuation greater than 23 dB at a frequency of 2 kHz. So this is our design of a Butterworth filter. Uh, notice that the process is very simple, it's always the same. Now you may have wondered, well, you know, how do you come up with a value of C1 prime that is going to make all your values look so nice? And the answer is that it's not so simple. A lot of the time it's going to be an iterative process where you come up with a value for C1 um, and 
you know, all the values that you that you get um, are kind of strange values, odd values, and so you may need to increase your C1 a little bit or decrease your C1 a little bit just to make things fit. Uh, so it may take, you know, a couple or three iterations. Um, but, you know, ideally, if you uh, take a look at the capacitor values in the normalized circuit and you figure out what's the relationship between them, you can make more or less an educated guess for what a good value will be for C1. And then um, once you have that, all your capacitors have reasonable values. If you see your resistors are falling, you know, below the one kilo ohm value or beyond the hundreds of kilo ohms values, then you may need to uh, adjust your capacitances by uh, whatever, a factor of 10, a factor of 100 to make your resistors fall into place. So it is a little bit more iterative normally than, than what we've just described. I've just gone with uh, values that I knew were going to work out. Um, but the process is the same. So the level of difficulty doesn't change. It just takes a little bit of trial and error. Um, so hopefully now you have clear how to use the tables and the um, unity gain normalized section circuits to design any unity gain low pass or high pass butterworth filter for the high pass section will be exactly the same process except with the uh, high pass sections and the high pass table. Thank you.